to find us. And we ain't gonna get paid. Look at the dude singing. All right, welcome to episode nine of the Off Work Podcast. Hey, how y'all fellas been, man? How was y'all weekend? It was good, man. You know. Good, man. Still something straight, man. You know, still looking at this this craziness in the world that's going on right now. What's up with y'all boys, though, man? Hey, man. I, for one, had a good weekend, dog. I saw my girl for the first time since, like, March 28th, since this whole pandemic started. So we had a good time. Um, she got me some new socks. You know what I'm saying? Y'all shine going on my, my, my holy socks. So, you, you know, we that. had the Walmart. She got me some new socks. Um, we chilled. She came through? Huh? She came through for us, dog. She... <laughs> We, we, we had to, to, uh, we we had had to let that. her know. Drew DM'd her and asked her to um, cop me some socks. So that was love. Um, I said it's it's kind of weird, dog, because I haven't. It's been you know we only been seeing each other like via Facetime. So just to get that that human connection, dog, it took me like an hour to get used to like being in person. I ain't gonna lie. But um, it, it was a good little time, good little weekend. You know what I'm saying? But yo, one thing I noticed when I went out of town, dog, like people acting like the coronavirus is like dead i saw people like majority of people out there had like no masks on like eating in restaurants i was sitting there like yo like it's not over no nobody said anything about the coronavirus being over but there's no you vaccine gotta, the numbers are still the same like it's crazy to me yo. you gotta remember dog that we're privileged americans we do what we want so if you laid up now, I'm I'm just ma- mask up you'll be all right man i've been i've been out i, I i've been uh i ate at a restaurant masked up bro it was like nobody in there. Time hey. out, dog. Time out. You went in a restaurant and ate? Yeah. You dined in? What? I dined in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Wow. No, Jar- Jarvis, don't do that. You was just at the damn gym today, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you get- and you didn't have a mask on. Nobody what you was in. It was in my, it was my neighborhood gym. Nobody was there. Okay. So what, what about what somebody it? that went in there before you? Okay, I wiped down the machine. All right, but what about the the, all, the it was left on all the surfaces for the what entire month, two and a half months that it was closed? They said that there's no there's no evidence that if you touch surfaces, you can get you can catch corona. Okay, you report. Keep, you keep on believing it, but but yeah, okay. I mean, yeah. One thing y'all need to try is the um, the paint night joint, dog. Oh, I saw that. I, I saw you online. You know what I'm saying? Can I, oh, can I, can I, can I speak on where I saw that? But I, I saw. I saw something, <laughs> Jarrell. I saw something. On, <laughs> I saw something on IG. Where I saw Jarrell over there, like painting. It was like a what y'all paint? Like, a, how, how'd y'all set that up? So uh, she, um, she like bought the materials and, and like the canvas and like the paint and stuff. And then basically, um, I pulled up like a tutorial video on YouTube and just streamed it on my TV, dog. So it, this shit was kind of lit. So I we just it. followed the, we followed the video, painted that joint. It's always tough. Y'all boys be in y'all jam sport, though. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all boys got the girls and everything like that, though. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm happy for y'all, though. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so, hey, let, let's get to it, man. So over the weekend, a lot has transpired. since. Well, a lot has transpired since last time we potted. So... Um, we're not going to go too heavy tonight because we had like our last two podcasts have been kind of like heavy. So we have a little bit of fun tonight. But uh, plus I'm in, a, I'm in a silly mood, so I'm just letting y'all know off top. But anyways, like Drew Brees made a statement basically when they asked him about like if um, players kneel during the national anthem this year, like would he participate? And in short, he said he doesn't like, he doesn't want that. You, you have to respect the flag and the flag means so much to his family and what he believes in is it's disrespectful to the flag. So then all the athletes, LeBron, like basically every black athlete in the U.S. went off on Drew Brees. Like they went in on him. And then his PR team um, wrote a statement. Well, he wrote a statement. I'm thinking his PR team wrote, his PR team wrote it. But he wrote a statement apologizing to um, black America. And then Donald Trump, Went in on Drew Brees for apologizing, and then Drew Brees went in on Donald Trump saying that no, we had to support our, our black brothers and sisters. So, it's hey, sure. How, how do y'all feel about that? Duh, I mean, for real, this just brings Cap back to the forefront, bro. 
this is basically everything Kaepernick was doing years ago. And, and now it's, you know, back to the light. Like we now it's finally clicking for a lot of people, like what he was standing for, or should I say kneeling for, um, you know, when he was doing that during the national anthem before the games. So, I mean, with Drew Brees, like it's, it's crazy that it came from him because he has done a lot for the community. Um, like in New Orleans, like um, especially during Katrina, things like that. Like he's done a lot for that that city, and like that city is predominantly black. So for him to say, <laughs> no, Jarvis, what is wrong? What is Jarvis I off the silly move today, dog? I what told you off the silly move. Go ahead, my bad, dog. No, nah, yeah. go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. I, I just think, dog. Like long story short, dog. Like. I hate to say it, but fuck Drew Brees, dog. Like, my thing is, you feel how you feel. So when, when someone asks you something, you have you don't have time to think. You just shoot off off a, off a cuff. So I feel like that's how he felt. That's how he feels. Like nothing changes within 24 hours. Now, all of a sudden, 24 hours later, you have this new um, outlook on life, and he called Shannon Sharp and all sorts of stuff, dog. Like. See, but look, I mean, I agree with you for, from a certain standpoint, but also I disagree. It's because it's like people started jumping on his ass, rightfully so, right, because of the situation and everything that happened. But I think what happened was is that Drew Brees, over that time period where people were jumping on his ass, is that he got educated, right? In 24 hours? Yeah. Okay. Hell yeah. That's a, quick, that's a quick turnaround, in my opinion. You know, and, and now, I don't know if it was a genuine apology, like you said. It, it was probably his PR team that put out a statement, because I'm sure genuinely Drew Brees still feels that kneeling during the national anthem, you know, is wrong, and that he doesn't feel that he has to respect the person. He grew up in a household where his, father, where his grandfather, like, fought to keep segregation going and repeated that rhetoric to him growing up. So this is something he was raised on. This is just my opinion, like I said, like, yeah, see, but my thing is, so my brother has actually met Drew Brees um, back in 2000 and I want to say three or four when he was with San Diego, uh, when he was at the Chargers. And my brother said he's just genuinely and he's naturally like just a very nice person. And he really does care about the military community. However, with that being said, is military members will tell you that it does not offend them when individuals kneel for, you know, kneel during the national anthem, you know, when it's playing. And the reason behind that cause, obviously, is because military members fight all across the world for our freedom, for the opportunity for us to have that right to be able to, you know, to be able to peacefully protest. So I just think that Drew Brees probably went about it wrong. I mean, obviously, if he feels how he, if he felt that way, then, you know, kudos to him for actually voicing his opinion. He's a, he's, he has a right to have his own opinion, but obviously it's bad timing right now. And kudos I think that- what? What are, you uh-huh. giving, what are you giving him kudos for? For him to have the right to his opinion. For him? For, for, he should have had – he has his own opinion. In my, in my opinion, if he would have stuck to that and just been like, look, you know, I understand, you know, what's going on, you know, with Black Lives Matter or whatever the case may be, but I still don't agree with, you know, kneeling during the flag, I probably would have respected that more because at the end of the day, he felt how he feels. We can't, okay. tell, him, we can't tell him that, oh, no, that's wrong. Because he's entitled to his opinion, just like we, we're we can tell him it's wrong. We can tell we can him t- it's wrong. All right, we can tell him it's wrong, but just like he could tell us our opinion on fighting for for our social cause is wrong, we're going about it the wrong way. I'm not siding with Drew Brees by any means, but what I'm trying to say is is that he's entitled to his opinion. So I will say, as a military service member, it does not bother me when individuals kneel during the flag. And like I said, Drew Brees, when you say that, you don't speak for everybody, you know, who, who may personally feel that way. And just like I don't speak, or we don't speak personally for everybody who feels our way about black and social, black social issues. I just think that it was bad timing. And I think that he, need, he needed to get educated by his teammates within that 24 hour period for him to actually, you know, understand that it was the wrong time. I don't think, honestly, I don't think, I think it's very naive for you to think that he all of a sudden got educated on black issues. Being that he he plays for the New Orleans Saints, as you stated, probably like right. the highest rated black community in, in sports. So yeah. I don't think all this about getting. I think he's been educated. I think he didn't care, and he didn't have that safety blanket like he had before 
where other people will voice that same opinion. Like, if he would have said this last year around this time, it wouldn't have been a big issue and he wouldn't have apologized. Of so course. Maybe, maybe it's just hard. Maybe I'm not a forgiving person, but I believe, like, once someone, once someone shows you who they are, believe me, believe it at that. Like you said, I, I would respect it more if he wouldn't have apologized. Yeah. That's how I feel. Screw it. That, that's one thing about Trump. I can't say. I don't, I don't agree with anything Trump says, but he's the type of person where he says it and that's it. There's no double back. There's no apologize. I want to look good for PR, da, 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 like. So that, that's just me on that. Um, so do y'all think that Neil is going to come back this year when NFL absolutely. comes back? Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good question. Adrian, Peter, Adrian, Adrian Peterson has already came out and made a public statement that he will be kneeling. He said there will be multiple players around the NFL that will be that will be. He's still going to be in the league next year? Yeah. All right, you he had a good year. He had a solid year, bro. I, I, yeah. Hey, I'm just asking, asking questions. Um, I met AP dog in the club out in Houston that one time. Shut your ass up with all these fucking stories. <laughs> no, I met Shut AP your dog. Ass up. <laughs> so me and me and my boy Coop, what's that? Knox. We in club Knox, dog. I see AP in the button up, like he's doing like dance by himself. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, yo, Coop, like, yo, that's AP. He looks like mad small in person, dog. I, I, I was scared to shake his hand because y'all know how everyone says, like, if you shake his hand, like, he'll break your hand, basically, when you dap him up. So I'm scared all that. <laughs> but he's like a little dude in person, dog. Is he, is he juice size? Nah. But he's, he's small, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's, it's the off-season, dog. But um, he's, he's a smaller dude, dog. Like, I met him in that club. I met Big Crit. Some good th- that's the club. Remember the club? We went in there and drill. This one drills this in Houston. And drills like, dog, like they didn't they didn't pat us down, dog. I'm like, yo, they didn't. That's crazy. I, I didn't realize it, dog. But like two weeks later, like that club got shot up and they closed it down. Um yeah. rest in peace, Club Knox, baby. But uh got a question for y'all. What's the longest y'all dr- have driven to meet up with a chick? Drew, let's ask Drew. Two, yeah, go ahead. About, about two and a half, two and a half, three, three, yeah. it, some, some, somewhere in that range. I'm trying to think. What's the what about, I drove, yeah, because I drove from Salt Lake to Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> Middle of Idaho, dog. <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> bro, you might be the only black dude I know that's ever been to Idaho, bro. No cap. <laughs> I, I dri- I've driven 18 hours, dog. All right. All right. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this it's dog? Why Jarvis bro? always got a cat, bro? He always, bro. bro he always at the next level, dog. Bro, bro I'm, I'm not, not going to say any names. I'm not going to say no names. Jarvis. Jarrell, I'm Jarvis. Jarvis. Jarvis from Houston, Texas. To Tampa, Florida. You don't remember that summer? No. I drove from Houston. Let's see. I drove from Houston, Texas to, to Tampa, Florida. So there was no other reason? I mean, my grandparents lived out there. Oh, well, I remember. But no, that was for to see your grandparents. That was not to see the significant other. Hey, Grandma. Hey, Granddad. I love y'all. Don't see, don't see the girl, dog. No, dog. No. How old were you, dog? About this 22? Was like 2011. Yeah, 22, no. There's no way, bro. There's no way. It ain't worth it. I mean, I, I'm just saying 18 hours. Uh, was it worth it? 18 hours? I mean, we didn't. We just hung out. This was like, she was like, this is hung out. Nothing like that. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? Looking back on it, was it worth it? No. 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 Only, only because my grandparents were there. What? Only because my grandparents were there. That's what I'm saying. So it wasn't worth it. Your grandparents were with you and the girl? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. For most of the trip, dog. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Uncle, Uncle Terry was there too. Uncle Terry, Aunt Toya, and my grandparents are there. But other than that, no, no, let, let, let's let's be superficial for a second. What does a chick have to look like for you to drive 18 hours, Jarrell? Ooh. 18 hours, bro. Hey, now you're getting in your jam sport. Because if I'm driving 18 hours, dog, for a kid, she got to be a dime plus 99. 
<laughs> no cap. She got to be a dime plus 99, dog. And, you know, the end of the trip got to end with something spectacular. That's no cap. Dog. Driving that long, you it's, it's too many risks involved. I didn't do it. I didn't even do anything with her. It was not like to get off to get off to. There's an elephant in the room right now, dog. I didn't have any sex. Right, I didn't smash or anything like that. We just hung out. But uh, that's even worse. Really mad, that's disappointed that's in me, dog. That's even worse, dog. What you mean? No, I'm not. I'm not driving 18 hours to do you no know, family matters type stuff, dog. With no, with my female, dog. That's that's cat. That's fucking dead. All right. So I mean. He trying to he trying to move to the next subject, dog. Bro, eighteen hours, dog. About Will, what's your favorite Will Smith movie, no. man? <laughs> <laughs> One nah, gotta go, Will nah, Smith. Boy. Nah, dog. Eighteen hours, dog. The thing is, it's too many risks. Like she could be talking, uh, you know, talking talking stuff up, and she could be capping the whole time. She could be saying, "We gonna do this, this, and this," and then you get there and like nothing, like. Listen, man. You know, it's too. Is what's gonna happen, dog? When you other drive that, that way. Other than that, this what I be, this what I be doing when I'm driving eighty hours, nigga. I'm sleeping. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> 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 Bro, I'm not driving eighteen hours for nothing. I don't care. I fly. Anything more than five, I'm flying. But dog, I was young. Up. I was young, dog. I was twenty-two. Dude, you were twenty-three years you, old. You were old enough. enough. <laughs> you were old enough. Come on now. My man said I was young, like he's 16 years old, 15, 16. I was, dude, I was you were young, 23. I was a young boy, dog. But I mean, other than that, the long side driven is like maybe like four. So yeah. Plus, that, I mean, that's reasonable. Reasonable, dog. You know what I'm saying? Plus, it's because it, it, to keep it a buck, dog. To get all right, boy, you doing a lot of stuttering now. <laughs> <laughs> to keep it a buck, dog. Like to get from like the north side of Houston to the south side of Houston is like an hour or some change. So I mean that that's that's been done, but yeah, it's all like four hours like is what like a two podcasts. So I will I will say that though, like podcasts do help a lot when it comes to driving. Like yeah. cause I for real, my max used to be like two hours, bro, and I would start getting tired behind the wheel. Like I hate driving, but like I drove I drove to, from Salt Lake to Vegas once. It was like five hours. And that, that was like a podcast and half of another one. That was Gucci the whole time. So, But you would need, you need on Idaho, dog. Because remember, you, you sent us a video. You're driving to Idaho. We saw like the tumbleweed going across. No. <laughs> terrible. It's a terrible drive. Going across the road, dog. No, it's, not, it's nothing. It's nothing. I mean, there's <laughs> mountains and stuff. But after a while, bro, it's a week. Did you get a potato? Would you do it again? Would you do it again? No. A it ain't worth it. Skins, but I the whole potatoes. <laughs> you get some potatoes, dog? <laughs> no, man. No, so where's, where's, no, where's I don't locate it, dog? Is that I could have sworn, <laughs> sworn I was in the Midwest, dog? Is it by no, 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 no. We not we not gonna talk about that, bro. What we gonna talk about the other day, bro, is me and Drew are having a chat, bro, on Xbox, bro. We we chilling, right? And this man didn't know that the Bahamas and Jamaica. <laughs> Two different countries, dog. <laughs> dog. My man said, my man really thought Jamaicans were bohemians, dog. He said, it's the same thing. I said, bro, it's not the same thing, bro. They're two different countries. No, nah, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> this is, this is, everybody's ignorant to some stuff, bro. This is part of my ignorance. I thought the Bahamas was a collection of all those countries down there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the Bahamas was. No, I didn't know the Bahamas was a country itself. I just thought they called all those islands. That's the Bahamas. That area is the Bahamas. Now, nah, I, I hope I don't. I hope I don't offend no none of our Jamaican listeners, dog. Nah, uh, no, don't start. Don't don't start. <laughs> no, no, I gotta tell the story, dog. So it was my it was my college graduation. Me and my boy Tim, we went on like to Jamaica, like on a cruise, or whatever, right? So, dog. <laughs> These Jamaicans, like, oh, they, they ran up on Hold on. Trash. Hold on. Did Tim talk to you during the vacation? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tim is an enigma, dog. Don't get on my boy Tim, dog. <laughs> hey, no. come on, dog. You got you to gotta, you gotta tell the backstory no. behind that, dog. Shout out, shout out to this dude, Tim, dog. Tell the backstory to that, Drew. <laughs> we would the 
Uh, we went to where were we at? <laughs> I ain't gonna save you on this one, brother. <laughs> Yo, go ahead. Cause you, you, already know, you already know the stuff I can I can't talk about. So go was ahead. It Miami, I, was it Miami? Get yourself. No, we was in Houston. Oh, Houston. Okay. So we was we was all in Houston chilling like a fellas trip type shit. And I bet. I bet. <laughs> we was all used to chilling, dog, on some fellas uh, trip type shit, dog. And John was just like, yeah, yeah, my boy Tim going to meet us out, out here. We are like, all right, cool, cool. And he was like, yeah, I think he go to Florida. He went to Florida State, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's driving up from Florida. And I'm like, oh, I mean, okay, cool. That's your, that's your man? All right, that's, that's love. Like, to get a dude to drive from Florida all the way to Texas just to chill with you. That was like, like, a, 12 hour, that was like a 12 hour drive, he said. Yeah. Yeah, that's your man's dog. So your man. this, dude, this dude drives twelve, like twelve hours, all the way to Houston, and then he <laughs> did he meet us at the club, right? At the restaurant or at the restaurant? No, it was a strip club. Don't be. We can tell the full story. <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't. I don't remember that being. I mean, him meeting us there. But go ahead. So whatever. So yeah, he met us there. We dapped him up or whatever. He was like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, introduced ourselves. He was like, yeah, my name is Tim. That's the last words he spoke the whole trip, dog. My name. Is... <laughs> <laughs> dog, my, my, man, my man literally drove twelve hours, dog, to say two words, two three words to the homie, Tim. dog, and then left the following day, dog. Tim is dog, a this, listener. This, Tim, I love you, dog. These guys right here is Julian Jarrell. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm, I'm sitting this one out. Hey, nah, man. I'm, shout out to Tim, man. I rock yeah. with Tim, man. He's a cool dude. I'm just that shit was wild to me. Like, hey, this. <laughs> This nigga ain't seen nothing the whole, <laughs> the whole trip. No, no cap. That's how that's how I'm be at my girl's birthday party, dog. Like it's in July. I'm not gonna know anybody, dog. I'm just gonna be playing the cut, dog, chilling. No, don't do that. That's a bad. That's a bad look, bro. That's a bad look. You gotta meet. You, you gotta mingle. You can't do that when you have kids, dog. Huh? You can't do that with kids. I said my girlfriend's party. Oh, you said your girlfriend did something at kids' party. Your first your first time meeting her <laughs> no, family. No, 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 no. What type of time is this dude on, dog? You said my I think you, you said my kid. You, you, got, you gotta speak at a kid's party, dog. I'm not going to no damn kids' party. But it's my kids <laughs> you, with you, me. You, you sure you ain't going to no kids' party, dog? I'm positive, dog. <laughs> I'm positive. But, but, uh, you can't go to your you can't go to uh, your girl's party and meet her family for the first time and not talk to nobody. That's yeah. it's a bad look. Okay, I ain't gonna, be, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna be. I'm I'm gonna be when I'm around people I don't know. I'm more reserved. I'm not gonna be like okay. the most talkative person in the room. No, but you gotta you gotta bingle and stuff though. You gotta make your way around the room, bro. Drew, how do you, you can't, do it? How you can't you do just it? be. You can't be in the corner the whole time, bro. Drew, no, no, how no, do you? That's, do that's weak. That's what I'm saying. You gotta mingle. That's how. That's how I wish though. Like if sports are back on, like the the game be on the screen, and that's something to talk about. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, it's like, yo, like, you, don't know, you don't know someone. Oh, so what do you do for a living? So you think that's going to be playing at your girl's party? A game? Yeah. Yeah, I would do it. That would not be playing at a, at a chick's birthday or, party. Or if there's, like, games at the party. Like, you know, like, um. Spades or something. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, what's the joint, uh, Drew, that we be doing? That we, well, you guess what the other person's doing? Taboo. 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 Hey. That's my joint. That's yeah, my yeah. joint, dog. Shout out to Warren, dog. The dude who made the um the the song at the beginning of our podcast, dog. Like me and him, we're we're playing Taboo, dog. Unstoppable, dog. Unstoppable tandem, dog. Taboo is the best ice breaking game. Like when, yeah. if there's every like some awkwardness in a group or anything like that, just pull out Taboo. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Undefeated. Or Brownie. But um, anyway, so <laughs> what, oh, what's that? Oh, so yeah, so me and Tim, dog, we're in Jamaica, dog. And like these Jamaicans, like ran up on us, like we got DVD, we got DVD of the river. That, my, my accents are terrible. We got DVD of the river, man. Everything I read, man. So, um, that's a terrible accent, by the way. But go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> these dudes sold a DVD to some white people on the cruise, dog. And the white people went back to the on the boat and put the DVD in their laptop. And it was those same Jamaicans like laughing at them. Like they paid like fifty dollars for them DVDs, dog. And Dang. Jamaican dudes like laughing at them <laughs> on the DVD. Talking about they got them, dog. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Shout out to my Jamaicans, man. But uh, yeah, that, that was crazy. So you look disappointed, dog. 
No, they pay like fifty dollars. They try to. I think it's like the Nile River or whatever river that is out there. That's the, a Nile. What? The, <laughs> the, yo, y'all two are the most ignorant dudes ever, dog. With geography, dog. Y'all dudes are the, the most ignorant dudes ever, dog. When it comes to geography, dog. The Nile River is what we're going with now. The, the Nile River, dog. <laughs> dog, it's some river out there, dog. But yo, anyways. No, you gonna try to tell me that there's a river in Jamaica? Yeah, Dunn's River. Dunn's River. That's what it's called. Okay, Dunn's River. Dunn's River, and they bought the DVD. Y'all can fact check it later, dog. It's beautiful. But um, now we're gonna, we're gonna get back on to our first episode. We talked about Dirty Mac and dog. So. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Uh, oh, man. So, okay, so the first episode, we talked about Dirty Mackin, right? And basically, Drew, give us the definition of Dirty Mackin, dog. Me? Yeah. So that's, uh, <laughs> Dude coming to me like I'm the aficionado on Dirty Mackin. You, you, uh, hey, you all said that you, you're a Dirty Macker in the past. I mean, of course. I mean, yeah, I did it. Um... The definition I'll probably say is bringing another man down to try to get at a girl. All right. that's, that's the most simple definition. So you try and get at a girl, and women can dirty Mac too. So you, you try and get at a, a girl, and she's with somebody, and you're like, oh man, he's whack. Da da da. Like, look at him, he's corny. I thought you, you could do better than that. Like, come on now. That's dirty Mac. So I'm just saying you could do better. So we're gonna talk about the the top no. dirty Mac and songs. And if I look my research the topic, dog, LL Cool J is the dirty Mac King, dog. Straight up. The I would dirty say Mac Drake, King. I would say Drake is. But go ahead. Well, Drake, I mean, that's I got I got we're gonna talk about Drake too. Cause that that time we're gonna talk about him now. Screw that. Yo, I'm gonna forget. That, Damn boy, you jumping from such to such. I, 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 okay, let me, let me fall back. So dirty Mac, dirty Mac. My bad. I get on tangent. So I think the top Dirty Mac song to me will be Joe, All the Things Your Man Won't Do. Um, I Can Love You Better by LL Cool J. I can love, like he spent the entire song like, <laughs> yeah, your man's whack. Look at him. Look at his haircut. Da, 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 da. I can love you better. I can do all this romantic shit for you. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, yo, that's dirty. So what are y'all top Dirty Mac songs? I mean, Marvin's room got to be up there. Got yeah. it, it, it got to be top five easily. Has to be top five. Marvin, Marvin's, room. Marvin's room is number one for me, dog. No, it's a classic, dog. It's a classic. <sighs> when you get when you get a little drink in your system, bro. <laughs> late night drives. <laughs> Come on now. What about mm -hmm. Bryson Tiller? Don't. Nah. Mm, I gotta oh. think of the lyrics. Hmm. Let's see what else. So yeah, Drake's Mar Rooms. Drew, I should be. Oh, Trey Song's the Dirty Mac King too. I can't help but wait. Oh yeah, that's can't help but wait. No, no, but he's talking about when you get back with him and things don't change. Yeah, so he's, he yeah. can't help but wait for you. You get back with your man yeah. and things. No, still no, no. Up. He's stating that you're gonna get back with your man and your shit, your situation's still gonna be messed up. Yeah, exactly. That's, dirty that's, not, that's not Dirty Mac, and he's saying yes. you're gonna go back with him and your situation's still gonna be messed up. That's dirty. That's dirty. Mac. No, that's not dirty. Mac and dirty. Mac. I'm <laughs> saying you gonna go back. But you really <laughs> are, baby girl. You are a star. I he's can't so help but wait. But he's not saying anything about the dude. That's the whole song's about how whack the dude. What do you is. mean? It's about the relationship. That's both of them together. Fine, y'all got it. That's that's the ultra dirty Mac dog. If you dirty Mac and based on like her getting back with him. Jarrell's dirty Mac before, dog. He don't know the real de <laughs> he yeah. don't know the real definition. I said I have just said I dirty Mac before in high school. Because he Jeez. Trey Saul is trying to get at a girl. And the girl is basically like, nah, like, I'm, I'm getting back with my ex. And Trey Saul, like, I can't, I can't, I can't help but wait for him to fuck it up. That, that's what he does. Yeah. Like, you, oh, you get back with that clown? Okay, I, I can't help but wait. He, he doesn't <laughs> you're he a star, didn't say hey, but that's about, Talk about how come you, you look at some of these lyrics, dog, and it's crazy for for him to see you for who you really are, baby girl. You are a star. I can I cannot picture me telling a girl that like yo, like you a star, girl. Like, real <laughs> that was two thousand and eight, dog. 
That was 2008, funny, uh, You're still not getting that off in 2008. I'm sorry. Yo, you, yo <laughs> you're a star, girl. Real talk. Why you, why you like, you're a star? <laughs> like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> nah, dog. That's Dirty Mac and Dog. I see you with him. Look, these lyrics. I see you with him. He ain't right, but you don't trip. <laughs> you stand by while he lies, then turn around and forgive. Come on, it's dirty Mac and dog. Come on. I can't right. wait to see your face with those tears running down your cheeks. <laughs> what can I do? I gotta stay true. Cause deep down I'm still a G. And I know, and I don't want to come between you and your man, even though I know I can treat you better than he can. That's dirty Mac and dog. Like, Ooh. I don't want to come between y'all, but he can treat you better than that. Y'all got it. <laughs> y'all got it. I'm not arguing it. Y'all got it. That's, that, I, but that's, I think we can't, that's we can't right. forget about, nah, nah, the Mario joint. We can't forget about the Mario joint. What was that? Let Just, me love you. How's that go? Let me, no, what is it? Baby, you should let me yeah. love you. Let me be the one. No, it's dead like that. Dog. <laughs> Thing you want. That's 106 apart days. But if I look at the lyrics, yeah, that is Dirty Mac and Dog. Wait, I'm didn't Bow Wow have a track too, Dirty Mac and? Probably. What about no. Let Me Hold You Down? I don't remember the lyrics. Oh, uh, come on. No, that was my joy back in the day. Yeah. Down, yeah. down, around, Atlanta, Atlanta, profound. Everybody oh, that was, that, that drum was featuring the GOAT. Huh? That track was featuring the GOAT, Maybach O. Yeah, Maybach O oh, was on Mario. Yeah, Maybach O. Amarion. Uh, Amarion well, is the GOAT, though, for how he handled the whole situation with uh, Lil Fizz and his, his um, the mother of his of his child. That's yeah. crazy. Now, now, now that's something that's wild, dog. There's no way in the world, dog, that we could be cool since we were kids, right? And one of y'all mess around with my baby moms. Absolutely not. But that's mean, never gonna be okay. Listen, that means he was thinking about it the whole time they were together. Exactly. Exactly. That's never gonna be okay, bro. That's yeah. wild. I feel like dog. They both dirty for it. It's not just him. The girl is too. They both dirty for that. But it's but it's more so him though. But I mean, eh, I don't know. I think it's even. Because when when that's your homie dog, and you've been a, a band member dog since y'all were kids, y'all made money together, y'all got memories together. Like your families know each yeah, other's you, families. You got just as many memories with your baby moms. So what you mean? What? From when you were a kid? That's like that's like comparing me and Jarvis's relationship to. Me and somebody I dated for three or four years. But I'm still it's saying, it's, no, it's just as dirty on both sides to me. Yeah, they, both, they both smutty. They both get some smut on their names. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, dog. So, <laughs> Drew, I know Drake is your man, but he's a mutt, dog. Him and Future are both muddy. Like, I listened to, that, I listened to Desires for the first time, dog. Oh. That's some manipulating shit, dog. They like manipulating <laughs> women. Yo, like, yo, it's I the, want you to move to a remote location, girl, because you got desires. Straight up, ma. Like, since you got <laughs> desires, I'm going to keep away from everybody. I don't want you around your family. I don't want you around nobody. I'm moving you to Katy, Texas, ma. Like, what? Because I don't want you to cheat on me. Cause I know you got desire. That's some muddy shit, dog. Dog, hey, you, you're, re you're reading it wrong. You're reading it wrong. He was, <laughs> he was, he was protecting her. How? He was, he was protecting her from his lifestyle, the limelight. He's like, I don't, I don't want this, I don't want this stuff to corrupt you. So I'm gonna move you out there to Katie and Dallas, so you can just chill. You don't have to be a part of, you don't have to be a part of this lifestyle that I'm in. That I am in. Come on now, I, I protect you. I live in Katie, Texas, dog. To move a chick out here is absolutely crazy, dog. Just that's random. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move you to Katie, Texas, like straight up. Like I don't like you talking to dudes. So you know what? You move, you gonna move to Katie, Texas, all right? That's that's some much shit, dog. I don't care. I know Drake's uh, tough boy. He's protecting her, man. And dog, uh, so I, you're right too, dog. I was looking at the hotline bling the, uh, lyrics, <laughs> and bruh, that's that's manipulative too. <laughs> He's a manipulator, crazy. dog. Crazy manipulator. No, we we all know that it's some toxicity involved, especially future. He's king toxic. Come on now. Who we all know who these who these new girls you around? I ain't seen before. I ain't seen you with these girls before. Who the hell are they? She was acting out to my daughters, dog. I'm sorry. Dog, she was acting brand new. He said, you used to always stay at home and be a good girl. <laughs> she used to, dog. She ain't like that no more, man. 
be a, changed. To tell your girl she used to be a good girl when she's a grown ass woman is crazy. <laughs> that is completely ridiculous. Dog. <laughs> So, so y'all telling me y'all never broke up with a girl, and then after y'all broke up, she started acting brand new, doing of all this. Of course. That's what we're talking about. Okay, then. So what you saying? I'm not going to say you, you was a good girl before. Like, yeah. <laughs> like she was a slave or something. He's been the eight days. <laughs> I don't get it, dog. <laughs> I don't get it, bro. Like, I don't get it. And, and women love it, dog. Women love it. But you thought with Drake, he'll say some like manipulated shit like that. But it, it goes so hard with like the flow and the beat is like whatever. But when you look at it later on, it's like, dog, that was whatever. toxic, dog. That was toxic, bro. But um, uh, shout out, shout out to Drake, dog. All right, so it's 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 pod question. All right, so we have a question um from a listener, whatever, right? It's, it's a guy. He says, um, what's up, fellas? Could y'all stay friends with someone that's a deadbeat dad? He said, I have a homeboy that is not in his kid's life. And basically, like, he sees, like, his homeboy buying stuff for other women and just doing stuff, but he, he does, he's not in his kid's life. So could y'all personally... Be friends with someone, or can you like he like separate the two and be friends with them, or not? I mean, me personally, I couldn't. I couldn't be friends with somebody that I know that's being a deadbeat father. But that's just me based off my morals and and ethics and stuff like that. Because like if I see that your kids are struggling and you're out here wanting to dine at some shorty or whatever the case may be, and plus buying up stuff for yourself, you know, and doing it big, like nah, I can't respect that. Because at the end of the day. When you become a parent, I was just telling somebody this. I said, when you become a parent, dog, like your priorities change. Like everything that, you know, that you want to do in life kind of goes on the back burner. And you try to obviously improve your life through, you know, your career aspirations and, and things like that. But it's for your kids. It's not for you. At least that's the way I view it. Um, because like I said, I always want to put my, my kids in a position to win and my family to win. And that's just the type of person I am. So if one of my homeboys isn't doing that and isn't taking care of their responsibilities, then nah, I can't respect it. I mean, I think, I think y'all, y'all can still be cordial or whatever, but I don't think y'all can be like best friends anymore or anything like that. Like you definitely, I feel like you all have to separate yourself a little bit away from that. Um, you know, like, like Jarrell said, you know, that goes against your morals, what you stand for as a man, then, you know, I don't, I feel like that's not somebody you should be around or be hanging with. Um, but like I said, that's not to say that y'all won't be cordial or, you know, won't, if y'all see each other, y'all will, you know, dap it up, chop it up for a little bit or whatever. Um, but I don't think the relationship will be, you know, as strong as it may have been in the past. But what, but what if this is like, you're like really, really close homie, like y'all been close friends since like elementary school and he's on this type I mean, of stuff. At that point, if y'all have been friends for that long, I feel like y'all should have enough respect to be able to have a conversation about it. What if he don't listen to you? I mean, I, you got to cut ties. You got to separate yourself. But I feel like you should have a conversation. If it's really a friend like that, you should have a conversation about it first. And, like, be like, yo, I, you know, I see what you're doing. You know, I want to let you know that, you know, as a man, I can't really respect that, you know. Um, you know, your kids are supposed to come first. So, I mean, that's, like I said, that's just a talk you, you will have to have with him. So that's the advice I would give to him to talk with him first before he makes a decision. You got to have a conversation, like. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, have a conversation yeah. with your boy. If that's really a dude like that, you got to talk to him first and then make your decision after that. But then again, that's also tough at times, too, because, like, even though they might be your homeboy, you don't never want to cross that line. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I know there are certain friends that I could talk to certain things about, and I know there are certain friends that I can't, you know, necessarily – well, at least I don't feel comfortable saying certain things to them about. And – and obviously, kids is a sensitive subject. You know, telling somebody how to parent, you know, is a sensitive subject. It could be to some individuals. So I feel like that's a slippery slope. But I mean, just like you said, if your relationship is solid, in a sense, and you know, it's y'all have always been, you know, pretty blunt and honest with each other, then I think that's an easy conversation. But if not, then that's where the difficult part can happen. <clears throat> I feel like um, association breeds similarities. So birds of a feather 
flock together. That, that's how I see things. So I think before I had kids, I had a friend that um, was a deadbeat. And I was posting before I had kids. Cause I guess I didn't, um, I didn't really grasp the importance of it. And we were all young, just like figuring ourselves out. But looking back when I was like, dog, like he was a, like a real life deadbeat. And this is something I was like extremely close with. So um, once I started to, to become an educator and I, I see the impact that it has on kids, like not having their fathers in their lives or, you know, even moms in certain circumstances, I see how that has an impact on it, on a child and their development. And at that point, I couldn't, I could no longer separate the two. So I had to talk with them like, hey man, so what's up with, what's up with your seed? Um, when last time you seen your seed? Oh man, uh, like a few months ago. Oh my God. Jarvis, your, your old, your old. How old is yo, it? Jarvis with this lingo, bro. <laughs> No, this thing is Jarvis been bringing back. We go from 05, bro. You see, yo, what's up with your seed, man? <laughs> yo, you ain't seen your seed, no? I, I, I don't want to, spe- we're on a podcast. I don't want to specify whether it was a boy or a girl, because then it'll no, be. No, just say child. I don't get, I don't get it. What's up, with your, what's up with your child, man? He's like, shit, shit. Been a few months. And <laughs> then, like, I told, was he, like, the child had, like, a stepfather situation in their lives, whatever. I said, have you met the, the stepfather? He's like, yeah, a few times, whatever. But, like, I mean, I said, have you said anything to him about, like, the parenting or whatever? He said, I really can't say anything because, I mean, he's raising her. I'm not raising her. So, mm-hmm. basically, like, he's 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 their dad. And I was like, and that's why I looked. I was like, dog, I, 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 had, I had to, like, slowly cut ties with him. That along with some other stuff that went on, but I had to, like, slowly cut ties with him and um, really, like, you know, reassess the the friendship but um yeah like that's that as that from that standpoint but uh i i personally at this stage i can't do it because i i I can't separate it personally that's tough too dog like because what you just said was like the dude he felt like the other man was more father to his kids than he was and bro i can i could never imagine being in that position dog like i love my kids bro like limitlessly like my kids in my opinion they can do the most wrong things dog and i would still love them at the end of the day bro so for somebody for somebody not to be involved in their kid's life you know and not want to be there it's crazy to me that's absolutely crazy to me expect like a lot of cats be capping dog like oh man my my baby mom's making it hard for me to see my child that uh she she tripping listen i'm not gonna put too much of my personal information on the podcast But I will say this, like, as men, like, the system is changing. You can fight for your rights because we have as much rights as women to our kids. So we're we're entitled to that as fathers. So you you have just as much rights to to fight for your kids. Now, some some fights might be harder than others. And, you know, you might have to pay out for lawyers or – just, just find a way. I know everyone's not financially able, but I mean, you can fight at the very least. So, I mean, I'm not gonna judge anyone's situation because there are there are guys like that. Like I, I have family members who the mother has ran away with a child and moved to a completely different state. Like, I, like some, I had a family member in California, and the mother's child like moved them all the way to DC. Without him knowing, unbeknownst to him, he didn't. He was like looking for his child for a decade plus, mm. and like when he got his daughter back in his life, like he had to show receipts, like, "Hey, like I was looking for you. Like, here are the lawyer fees. Like, we we were searching for you." But the mom did it to the point where it was so under the radar, like it made it impossible. And like, it, it's the relationship is has been um, broken at that point because like you have. Mm-hmm. Kids being brainwashed to think that their father's a certain type of way. So father's like, fight for your kids. You know, I, I will say that. Yeah, but shout out, shout out to all the dads, man, too, man. That's involved in their kids' life, man. Hey, yo, we should do like a special edition, like maybe like a, a Father's Day segment on the podcast, dog. Oh we yeah, I'm down for that, dog. Dog, 
or we could we could post like on our page like pictures of like the homies we know that are active in their kids lives and just post it on a story or do something because you know I, I think with our podcast we represent like a a, a certain demographic dog yeah, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's a lot of podcasts out there that that talk I'm a, I'm a big us up I'm gonna get my shit off real quick but we're college educated black men and not to say that you if you go to college you you're you're better but it's just a different perspective that we have from going to college. Like a lot of stories talk about are, are from college. Um, we talk about relationship stuff. I'm not gonna give all our secret sauce away, but we, we represent a certain demographic uh, of, of men that haven't been represented in the past. So we should do something like that. Shout out to the daddies, dog. Straight up. And then also, I just wanna say this too, is like, just because you didn't necessarily give birth to a child doesn't mean that you're not a dad, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of fathers I know that are great step parents or great, you know, individuals who are just in, you know, their significant other's life and that are playing that role just as well as, you know, a biological father could. So just because you can make it make a child doesn't necessarily make you a mother or a father. So Yeah, dog, there, there's there hey man, there's there's a lot of I don't want to call it stepdads or stepmoms because it's really it's, it's it means more to the kids. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, like, yeah, like, shout out to them. It, it takes a special type of person to raise. I, I'm, I'm going to speak from a male's perspective. It takes a, a special type of man to raise another man's child, especially yeah. if that man is absent, like, taking on all the responsibilities. Like, that, shout out to them. We're going to yeah. shout out to those fathers on Father's Day, too. Yeah, shout out, shout out to the dudes learning, too, man, because that, that, that's important as well, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, y'all both know uh, my girl has a child and like just this is the first time, you know, I'm dealing with that. So it's it's like a lot of um, it's a lot of learning going on, you know, just learning how to go about doing certain things, um, you know, making sure that, you know, you involve the child as well. Like the child is just as important as she is. So, um, yeah, like I said, it's definitely been a, a big experience for myself so shout out to that as well man yeah, oh, yeah. man that, that's that's yeah. hey, that's huge dog pause um because like for me dog like I'm, I'm dating for three like when i my first got in the dating world it was like i was dating for myself like i was dating for myself it was like i don't gotta look out for my needs and my wants like there there's been plenty of like women that i ran across in my journey um Without saying too much, but I was okay. She she seems good, but will she be a good mesh with my daughters? No. Okay, time to keep moving. But when you meet someone that you know, you think that you know, I I, I met someone I thought would be like a, a good mesh, and you know, I ain't gonna talk too much, but yeah. Um, shout out to that. All right, so NBA bike. I'm hyped, dog. Yo, to all the NBA fans, dog, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm hyped, dog. Wait, 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 wait. Number one, what the hell are y'all too hyped for? Y'all teams ain't making the playoffs. <laughs> what you mean? We got invited. Exactly. One of the y'all teams is not up. making the playoffs, man. We, we, go going to Disney. we going to Disney. What you mean? I don't get it. I got, at, at bare minimum, I'll get eight more Blazers games. I'm, I'm cool with that. Just, just know by the end of the year, all of our teams going to be in the same spot, boy. So it's nah. going to go them Philadelphia 76ers, come on, championship, now. baby. All right? Come on, come on now. Hey, well, I had ben a big Ben can't hit a jumper outside of 10 feet. Come on now. What you talking about? Damn. It's been four years. Still no jumper. Come on now. And, and it's also, yeah, you're right. It's been four years, huh? No, it's actually been three years, actually, and two all-star appearances. So what is you saying? It's so what no is you jumper. saying? Still no jumper. That means he don't work on his game. He don't need a jump shot to be an all-star. He need one to win a chip. Yeah, because in the playoffs, no, Ron, the Rondo, Rondo won a chip without a without a jump shot. So don't do that. Who? Don't y'all do that, Rondo. But he had Ray. Yeah, he, he had Hall of Famers around him. What you mean? <laughs> he got Hall of Famers around us too. Embiid. This boy yeah, is Embiid not a Hall of Famer? Future Hall of Famer? When your center shoots a better jump shot than your point guard, it's a problem. Let's put, let's put it that way. Is Embiid is Embiid a Future Hall of Famer? I don't know. It's too early. What if, he gets hurt? what if he gets hurt? Yeah, I don't know. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all go ahead. But all I know is, dog, the Blazers, dog, listen, we're, we're four and a half games out. All we got to do is finish two games within the, the Grizzlies, then we get, like, a play-in. We got to beat them two times in a row, and then we're in the playoffs. Yeah, shit. I mean, the way 2020 is working, shit, that shit might work in your favor. But go ahead. <laughs> I'm a, yeah, I'm going I'm to keep it real. We, my Spurs, we out of it, dog. Bitch ass, bitch ass LaMarcus Aldridge want to have a season in the in- surgery right when we about to come back. I swear I hate this dude, man. Oh, I hate LaMarcus, <laughs> but I hate him. I hate him. <laughs> did he not know dog. that? Time out. Did he not know the NBA was returning? I don't care what he knows, man. <laughs> shit is annoying. Why couldn't you wait, man? You can play eight more games with him. Just to see what happens. Uh, all yeah, what, 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 what was going to happen is y'all had to go into the house. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Dude is Marcus annoying. Marcus. I hate LaMarcus. Nigga, he always flops in the playoffs, don't do shit. Uh, Listen, dog. I, I knew what I knew what time was with him when he gave up on us, dog. <laughs> we played the Grizzlies in the playoffs, dog. Like, he just threw in the towel, dog. Like, and he stopped rolling with us on the team plane. He started doing He checked out, dog. So All right, so – so realistically, who do y'all got in the NBA Finals this year? Bucks and Lakers or Bucks Clippers? Yeah, Lakers or Clippers and the Bucks. Y'all really don't think the Sixers gonna make the? the- no, no. I mean, think about it, dog. They're healthy again. Mm-mm. Not happening. Mm-mm. But yo, the, the the biggest benefit. Hey, tell me, y'all ain't just about to fucking <laughs> ignore my shit and go on to the next shit, dog. Y'all no. acting like the Sixers aren't gonna compete. Nah. But yo, they're I mean they're a good they're one of the best teams in the East, but they're duh, they're not gonna win a chip. Come on now. Mm-hmm. I think we match up well personally with the Lakers or the Clippers if we were. Duh, if the Sixers win a chip, all three all three of us gonna do a pod in all Sixers gear. Hey, in Philly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, that, that's, that's how confident it's not gonna happen, dog. All right. And shout out to my Philly Ox. Assalamu alaikum, baby. There's a lot of there's a lot of Philly Muslims out there, dog. So I was not going there. Shout out Gillian Wallow, dog. Yeah. Yeah. Man, y'all shout, man, y'all shout out. These dudes don't even care about y'all, man. Go ahead, man. Keep on keep rolling, man. Shut up, dog. Keep yeah, we, we going to do a collab with uh, Gillian Wallow. It's coming. Just yeah. wait on it. They've, they've been begging us, dog, to get on the off-work podcast, all right? So, anyway, <laughs> dog, the, big, the biggest beneficiaries of this is the Warriors, dog. Why? The entire thing. I, I'm going to tell you why. They get extended rest. So the, the season, the the next season will start to December. Yeah. So they get, Oh, you talking about next year? Yeah. They get extended oh, rest. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about this year. They get a, a top five pick. Like, they 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 they, they, they going to be ready, dog. They'll probably have a top two pick. They going to come back. They going to come back crazy next year, bro. Yeah. So I got a, I got a bet with one of, my home, one of my homeboys, right? And he said, listen to this. He said the Warriors will not be back in the finals. Ever. But within the next five years? Yeah. Nah, I think they will. That's what I tried to tell him. I was like, bro, there's way too much firepower. You got Clay coming back, Steph coming back, a top three pick, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green. They're probably going to sign somebody too. Like, so, bro, they'll be back. Yeah, of course. And then, like, yeah. So, before we, before we end this topic, so on the games, there's going to be no crowds there, right? Yeah, as of right now. So are, are y'all willing to watch? I mean, I look, I told you, I've been watching, like, Bill Russell, like, 1960 games, dog. So, I don't care about the crowd thing, but I dog. think they have, like, a, the players should be mic'd up where they talk. Yeah. Dog, yeah that, but, if the players are mic'd up, that would be – it's just like watching playground ball. Like, they just out out in the on the concrete playing, you know what I mean? Like – You can't play that live, going, though. You can't have that live because, they, you know, dog. players are tripping. They said they said the the ESPN version and like the the X rated version, uh, where you can like sign up for NBA. They did that for the Last Dance. They had like a mat- they had like a mature version, and then they had one that was like PG thirteen or whatever. I didn't know. They that. Could, yeah, but there was like two different ones you could watch. But if it's live though, dog, you know players are saying the N word to each other, dog. Yeah. Especially at, at this climate, that would be a good look for them, dog. Yeah. I think it's gonna be tough without fans, personally. Yeah, so I saw I read something on Bleacher Report and it said that the NBA is considering using NBA 2K fan noise as like a, a background filler. That's what it that said. Might work, dog. That's that what might it work, low key. So I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. I'm just excited oh. that we have something to look forward to. 
But, but the playoffs, how do you do that, dog? Hold on. But, however, what BJ said is that, remember, we still got the social calls going on. So even though, you know, we got something, you know, right now to distract us, we got to remember, you know, everything that has transpired up to this point and why we have to continue to fight, you know, fight and push forward towards uh, social justice, social injustice. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good point, though. Like, like I told y'all last year, I don't want this to be like a, a fad or like like a ice bucket challenge where it's just trending and once it stops trending, okay, we forgot about it. Like, I, I, a lot of laws have been passed as far as like cops not um, certain, like the Minneapolis Police Department has been like defunded and like um, there's laws put in place where you can't put um, residents in, in illegal chokeholds and yeah. all Bruh. that. So, I was talking to Lucas the other day, um, shout out to Lucas, and we were just talking about like the riots and stuff like that. And we and we just like brought up like what what what's gonna happen if all of them don't get convicted, bro? Like if they thought these riots were bad, bro, it it's gonna be ridiculous if they don't get convicted, bro. Hey, if these, if, these, if these dudes don't get convicted, dog, you can bet your bottom dollar, dog, that America's gonna burn. Dog, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna America, be a thousand times worse. Yeah, America's gonna burn. I'm telling you, America's gonna burn. Yeah, though, I mean, I hate to say that. I hate to say that, but it will. One gotta go. This time we're doing sequels. One's gotta go. Next Friday. Mm. Rush Hour Two. Mm. Bad Boys Two. Or Beverly Hills Cop Two. Which one? Yeah, old ass shit. Why we got that old ass shit with these? <laughs> Hey, get 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 Beverly Hills Cop to the fucking no, podcast, bro. No, it's right. 2020. Hold Ain't on. nobody trying to Hold see on. that bullshit. Hold on. Let's stop the disrespect. First of all, Beverly Hills Cop 2 is a great trilogy. It's one of my favorites. Of course, it would be your, your favorite. No, it's Eddie Murphy. What you mean? Classic Eddie. I'm going to keep it a bean with y'all, dog. He's I never seen it. Cop one or <laughs> that is trash. That's trash. That's, that's terrible, bro. That's terrible. Maybe it's Eddie seen, Murphy thing. I, I, I didn't see Hall Night. I didn't see what's Boomerang or Beverly no, Hills. You, you don't like, bro, you just don't like Eddie Murphy or something, bro. No, I don't like I all Eddie Murphy, dog. Have you seen Dr. Doolittle? Yeah. Nigga, that's Have you seen Nutty Professor? No, don't bring those up. Don't bring, don't bring those up. Don't bring Have you seen Nutty Professor? Yeah, I seen one and two. You seen Norbit? Yeah. This dude seen all the bad Eddie movies. What? That's why you don't like him? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Nutty Professor is a classic. Yeah. I don't Nutty, professor, Nutty Professor is – Drew, Nutty Trash. Professor is classic. Whoa, trash. whoa. Trash. trash. The Nutty Professor is trash? The only thing that – only thing good that came out of Nutty Professor was the Janet Jackson song. All right, yo. We're that's, the only thing, uh, that's the only thing good that came out of bro, Nutty Professor. There are so many classic scenes from the Nutty bro, Professor. Bro. That shit is corny, bro. No. <laughs> what? That shit is so corny. The no, shit man. with him and Reggie, dog, and the – in the comedy club? With Dave Chappelle in the comedy club? Corny. <laughs> dog, you're wild, dog. All right, but Beverly Hills Cop 2 got to go. I'm getting that out of here. Yeah. Hold on. Have you, have you seen any of them? You've never seen any of them? No. <laughs> this is crazy. I, I know, okay, I know, that, I know the significance of it, because that was, like, the first movie that showed, like, a black comedy lead where the black guys, like, charging up white people and, like, being like a sex symbol for the ladies and like being confident and stuff. Wait, like have that. you seen Coming to America? Yeah, don't know the only Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I've seen it. Don't know All right, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, dog? This is African Prince. No, what what yeah. country what what country is he from? Zimbabwe. <laughs> Zamunda. Zamunda. He, he ain't seen it, dog. <laughs> Zamunda? Is it Zamunda? Hold on, y'all. Is it Zamunda? This dude says Zimbabwe. <laughs> is it Zamunda? Is it Zamunda? Nah, it's Wakanda. No, I don't know Wakanda. It's the <laughs> I want to go where he said, I'm going to go anywhere. And he said, oh, anywhere in America. Oh, Queens. I can find my queen in Queens. He went to Queens, New York. He moved out there. Who was, his best, who was his best friend? Um, What's that dude? Did you like me? The dude y'all said like you. Arsenio. Arsenio Hall, dog. Jarvis was in the movie. He ain't never seen it. I, that shit don't make no damn sense, dog. I don't like no. 
And podcast listeners, I don't like no damn Arsenio Hall. Nah, you like my, you like uh, Montel Jordan though. Fine. Fine. <laughs> this dude like all Friday the night. The party's Yo. here on the west side. Yo, Jarvis, you would have killed in the nineties, dog. You was born in the wrong time, bro. You would have killed in the nineties. I, I killed it. I killed it in two thousands. I killed nah, it. Bro. Then. I you, killed in the twenties. What you mean? No, nah, in the nineties, you would have killed, dog. What you mean, you boy? Killed. Beverly Hills Cop gotta go. Next. So now it leaves us with next Friday, Rush Hour 2, Bad Boys 2. Next Friday. Um, Rush Hour 2. Sorry. No! Jarvis, shut up. Jarvis. Jarvis <laughs> shut you up. are ridiculous right now. Shut up. Bad Boys 2 is gone. <sighs> Jarvis, you're definitely Montel Jordan, dog, by the way. Ba- <laughs> <laughs> That's you, dog. <laughs> My man Jarvis, dog, Mr. Montel. They both like 6'5", too, dog. <laughs> He's like a pastor now, dog. Yeah, that's what you are. You a pastor, yeah. too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, what we get rid of next? Uh, Bad, Bad Boys 2. Yeah. Yeah. Bad Boys 2 is gone. I see. Y'all outruled me. So that leads to with next Friday at Rush Hour 2. Now, when I judge a sequel, I judge stuff about, like, how many stars are made. So if you look at next Friday, um, Mike, Mike Epps. Epps became a star off of that. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Michael Blackson. <laughs> no, Michael Blackson wasn't in that movie. Yes, he was. When? Be chess. I can get jiggy with this shit. Was you that Michael Blackson? You be chess. Be chess nigga who sold me this shit. Was get... that Michael Blackson? Yeah. Damn, you might be right. Hold on. So Michael Blackson became a star off of that. Um, Pinky. He was already he was already though. He, he was, was old. In society. Well, that's yeah. a classic character. Pinky's a classic character. He is like, a classic character, yeah. but he was already a menace to society. So that, that that you, but that that is just a, a classic black character. Damn, that was Michael Blackson in that scene. I forgot about that shit. I tell you, dog. So, but that what's that got to do with how good the movie is? I don't get it. He's a star appeal, dog. I mean, Rush, well, Hour, okay. Rush Hour 2 had, had the budget behind it. So it's two different types of feels to it. Dog, what's the better movie, Jarvis? That, that, is, that is difficult, though, Drew. Next Friday and Rush Hour 2. I mean, I know Rush Hour 2, you and I always be joking about that shit because that's no, like... That's in my, t- my top five favorite movies of all time. Next Friday. Yeah. There's no way I'm getting... No, it has to be Rush Hour 2. Damn, Rush Hour, Next Friday's gone, dog. Rush Hour 2 has to stay. It has nah, to. I don't know, dog. You got day day. <laughs> I don't know. Next Friday, for next Friday, even to be thought of as a, a great movie is crazy because how much of a classic Friday was. Like we were, we were comparing that next Friday to Friday, dog, and it still came out to be a, a, a great movie, dog. Dog, that's peak. That's peak Chris Tucker, though. Come on now. Who, no, they said um, who was that, dog? Someone was supposed to be oh Ezel was supposed to be um in next Friday, but it would be like yeah, sticky you know how sticky fingers was with Debo? They broke out of jail. That was supposed to be Ezel and Debo, dog. But Ice Cube wrote him out, dog. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't call him back, dog. <laughs> and he, <laughs> but think about how crazy like that would be for Chris Tucker, dog, to to be in, in next Friday and Friday after next, dog. But he's, he's supposed to be in Last Friday. I don't want to see old ass Chris Tucker and Ice Cube and another Friday. No, if, ba- if Bad Boys can do it, then Friday can do it. Well, he said he said he's not going to do it. They they had a so Chris Tucker did an uh, interview recently with Big Boy, uh, uh, and he said that he wasn't going to be in the Last Friday. Oh, that's why. He said that uh, apparently they're casting DC Young Fly to to play in the last joint. Ah. Come on, man. Yeah, that's stupid. Not as so, smoky, but um, at, are Mike Epps and Ice Cube gonna be in it? Yeah, <laughs> that better be like their son or their little cousin or something. I don't know. I th- maybe DC Young Fly would be Smokey's cousin or something like that, a little brother or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's stupid, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off that. So what? Who you rolling, Drew? You got to pick, dog. Rush Hour Two next Friday. Come on, Drew, dog. Come on, you know which one, bro. Come on. Mike Epps is your favorite comedian, dog. And that that, that Mike one Epps is one of my favorite comedians. That is, this is all. Yo, it's Chris Tucker, though. You got like, 
He's up Chris against. Tucker, I'm a. I'm a, I'm a roll. I'm a roll. Uh, next Friday, dog. I'm rolling. Kabuse, ooh, kabuse. I'm a roll next Friday, dog. I love. That's I love crazy. It. I love it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, when Danny was in the back smoking, dog, with the white dude, dog, he sucked his lip up, dog, with the back. <laughs> she was so crazy. Yeah, baby, he, he chasing him in the back parking lot, dog. He put <laughs> a cookie in the windshield, dog. Come on now, talk about the big sister, bigger, <laughs> the little sister, bigger than the big sister, dog. Come on, Drew, you gotta roll with us, dog. And Drew, you like you just Drew, you like the little Mexican dude on on next Friday, dog. <laughs> <laughs> the little Mexican dude, dog, with the skull leader. Hey, Essie, <laughs> what'd you do to my dog, Holmes? <laughs> talk about baby Joker. <laughs> See uh, that's you, dog, baby Joker. Oh, dog, that's funny, dog. All right, so we're gonna end the podcast how we normally end the podcast. What y'all been on? Now I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start us off first this week, dog. So I watched Insecure again, dog. Hold on, nah, can't. Don't do it yet. I haven't seen it. Come on, goo. I gotta. I gotta wait on my girl to watch it. I gotta, I gotta wait on my girl to watch it, dog. You can't talk about the last episode. I can't. Anything. I can't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Just wait, just wait. All right, so I can't miss Insecure, but all the people, all the listeners who watch Insecure, y'all know what time it is now. Okay, I I end it like that. So I've been on that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I started Money Heist. I don't know if I, I, I I'm still like on. No, the, I, uh, I've tried to start that a thousand times. I just I don't know, man. Do you know what bothers me with Money Heist? Is that I know it's not the English. It's not them. Like, they put, like, a voiceover, like, of them acting. Because, like, the, yeah, the original language is, like, somebody else speaking. And they put voiceover actors, like, American voiceover actors for it. And I can't get with that shit. I didn't even peep that, yo. It bothers me. That shit bothers me when I look at, look, like, look at my TV. I think you can watch it in the original language just with subtitles, though. Yeah, no, I'm good on that. Yeah, tried to watch that though, and I I couldn't get with it. Like, I got like halfway through the episode. And I'm like, you know, um, if I'm gonna start Killing Eve. My homeboy told me Killing Eve was pretty good, so I'm gonna start Killing Eve. Um, as far as music goes, though, like, listen, last year I couldn't talk about it, but um, Freddie Gibbs dropped that Alfredo, that rap album of the year, straight up. And I had like a two weeks or a week to to sit with it, so. My song of the week is gonna be "Babies and Fools" um, featuring Conway. Off that album, that yo know, Alchemist went ham on that album, dog. Like super underrated producer, dog. That's tough. That, that's what I've been on. Yeah. So what I've been on is uh, so as far as Netflix, I finally watched Uncut Gems. That joint was tough. About about time, boy. That joint was tough. So I just want to watch. I didn't like it. I'm not a big Adam Sandler fan. I've never really liked Adam Sandler as a, you know. Yeah, he's not, I don't, we don't, I don't think he's funny, but this wasn't yeah. a, com- a comedy. Yeah. He's funny yeah. on Big Daddy and, um. No. 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 He's not funny. Have you no. watched Big Daddy before? Big, no, last time I watched Big Daddy, I was like in middle school and that shit wasn't funny in middle school. He's not funny. Watch, what's that, what's that movie we go back, he's like a kid. He goes back uh, to the room. Is that Happy, not Happy Gilmore, that's the guy. Happy movie. Gilmore's funny too. All right, man. So yeah, I was watching Uncut Gems, bro, and it's not bad. Uh, no, it's no, no. It's better than that. What? I mean, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I, I mean, it has a good story. Um, it's a lot of dialogue in it. Um, but however, movie. the story it kind of ends up coming together as you know as it progresses. Um, but it has KG in it. Um, who else does it have in it? Drew? It's, it's another couple actors. The weekend. The weekends in it. Yeah. So I mean, it has. It has some. It has a good plot twist to it, so I definitely enjoyed that joint. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Why did, um, why did the dude slap him though at the beginning? I can't tell you that. Cause he's in the jewelry store. Dude just <laughs> slapped the piss out of him. I, like, can't, I can't tell you that. You you gotta watch the movie. I watched it. Though. I couldn't get into it. We'll talk about it offline. I don't want to spoil it for our listeners. Um, and then as far as uh, music, uh, Meek Mill dropped uh, a single called uh, Other Side of America, um, and I rock with that joint heavy, um, kind of in relation to what's going on, and obviously in, in our country right now. So 
Yeah, I definitely take a take an opportunity and listen to that. That joint is tough. So. Uh, so for me, um, I, I honestly haven't really. I've been, you know what? Because it was over the weekend here. Like it's been raining crazy. Like oh, I think I read on the news. Um, so I live in Salt Lake. For those of you that don't know, but like the over the weekend, we got as much rain as we did in all of April and May. Like it was crazy. So I really didn't feel like going out no more. I mean, nowhere. So I was catching up on, <laughs> I was catching up on like old ass movies. Like I was on HBO and like Hulu, shit like that. Just like catching up on old movies I never seen before. And I don't know how, but uh, the Denzel movie Ricochet. Have y'all seen that? Mm-mm. Nah, bruh. I I don't know if it's just. I mean, it's not just me because y'all haven't seen it. It might have just been one of those Denzel movies that slipped through the cracks. But it's like old. It's probably one of his early movies. Uh, but he plays like a cop that ends up being a lawyer. He got like iced tea and that shit. But it was pretty. It was dog. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, doesn't have a, dog. He, he doesn't have a big role. He doesn't have a big role. He's like a side character. Nineteen eighty type shit. You watching? No, nah, but look, it's on. I think it's on HBO. But go go check that joint out. It was pretty. It was pretty good to me. Um, but yeah, it's called Ricochet. Um, in terms of music, so uh, one of my favorite artists, uh, Che E. Crew. Um, he's dope R and B artist. He's dropped two projects this year um, called Still Single and another one called um, I think it's Projection. Um, and both of those joints are dope. So I've been listening to those a lot lately. Um, so definitely check those out. But for my song, um, Lil Wayne dropped the deluxe version of Funeral. And the, <laughs> Terrell, come on, what? what the, Nig- uh, niggas is not checking for Wayne in 2020, fam. Go ahead, though. But anyway, um, he dropped the deluxe version of um, Funeral. And he got a track up there with Uzi called Multiple Flows. And that joint goes hard. Um, that's my song. But what y'all – I got a question for y'all before we go. What y'all think about, like, everybody dropping deluxe albums now? It, it seems like it's coming back to the – it seems like it's coming back, like, to popularity. Yeah, because, like, Nav dropped a deluxe, a deluxe album and Ro James did, too. Uzi the did, baby, too. I mean, uh, Lil Baby dropped a deluxe. Like, Lil Uzi. I feel like every artist is doing it. I'm not a fan of it. Just drop your music out with the original album. I mean, they they try to get them streaming numbers up though. It's it's like the Chris Brown theory. The more music you have out there to stream, the more people gonna stream, especially when nobody have anything to do. But um, like, do, do y'all listen to rap music at home? No. Like in y'all crib chilling, like listen to it. No. Mm, uh, nah. Like in the, I only I'll listen to rap if I'm like playing 2K, like like doing that. But mostly it's in the car. Yeah. So I, I wonder, like, how the streaming numbers have been you know with this so maybe they've released stuff as people at the crib chilling like maybe there's an audience for that at this in the crib listening to um, music but uh yeah that's that's crazy dog so y'all got anything y'all want to say before we head out no nah, man y'all be safe be blessed so whether you at work watching us or off work we appreciate y'all for checking us out all right <laughs>